Oregon is the most often played map in ranked, and it sees a lot of play in Pro League too. That's why today I'm showing you how you can master Oregon and how to play this map like the pros do. We'll talk about common site setups and site pushes that are happening a lot in the current meta. We'll also talk about what operators you should play, what some power positions are on this map, what spawn beaks you can expect, certain callouts on the map, and I'll give you some round winning tips and tricks. So what bomb site do we see the most? In ranked, you'll find that people pay kids in dorms as the first bomb site, and then laundry and supply as a second bomb site. However, in comp, we usually see the bomb sites turn around, so laundry supply first, and then kids in dorms. As a defender, you aren't really safe from nades from below in kids in dorms because most of the floors are soft and we're in a really nade heavy meta. As a tertiary bomb site, you can either pay kitchen and meeting or kitchen and dining. Similar here, you'll see more kitchen and dining in your rank games and more kitchen and meeting in comp games. So how do I start and set up the bomb sites? So I know that some of you watching this video will be playing this map solo and some are preparing to play this map with a team or a stack. This is why I'll give you two different site setups for the first two bomb sites. For kit storms when you're playing it solo, I suggest reinforced attic, both walls to trophy and the both walls to closet. Make a rotate to white and a rotate to dorms and attic and additionally you can make footholds on the other wall to attic. If you're playing with a coordinated stack, I'd say reinforce to attic and reinforce closet. If you'd like to actively play an attic pit, you can reinforce this wall and make head holes on the wall next to it. This allows you to peek towards trophy and bedroom. Make a rotate to dorms, have footholds on the other side of the wall, then reinforce this wall to big window and make a rotate on the other one, and of course make the rotate to top white. If you're looking to have a few roamers or want to have a few escapes from sight, open up the attic hatch and the dorm hatch. These two allow you to put some vertical pressure or to escape if you get pressure too much in your anchor position. For laundry, a solo setup would be to open a rotate on this wall between the bomb sites. Reinforce this wall to freezer and put head holes on the other wall. Reinforce this wall in box, put head holes on the other wall next to it. Reinforce this wall in e-box and have head holes next to it. Reinforce the two walls to big tower to give you more safety if you're playing around the door in blue bunker. My advice would be to reinforce blue bunker completely. If your team isn't willing to play smoke and Jaeger together, which we'll talk about some more later, it won't make sense if you hold on to this. If you have a shield, you can still play around pillar to hold on to the head holes on e-box. Reinforce freezer, e-box and laundry hatch as well. If you're playing it with a coordinated stack, you can open up a rotate towards elbow. If you put the rotate on the left side, seen from supply into blue bunker, you'll be further exposed to freezer. If you put it on the right side, you'll be more exposed to people pushing in blue bunker. Keep in mind that you'd usually play this as a smoke and have Jaeger's ADSs on the wall to have your shield stay up longer with flashes and nades. Make sure to not place the shield on the wall, but place it a further back so the ADSs will actually stop the flashes before they get to the shield. The chances of an enemy playing floors to get rid of your shield is very big though. With a stack, I'd also advise you to open up a high line of sight on this wall. This allows you to peek to big tower stairs from supply. You could be very exposed here if you're walking by though. This line of sight makes tower stairs more difficult and scary to take for attackers. An alternative hold to freezer, which we now see happen a lot in Pro League, is the following. You no longer have one wall reinforced the freezer and head holes on the other, but you leave the both walls soft and make crouch height holes on both of the walls. This makes freezer a really difficult area to take for attackers because as soon as they come down the stairs, they're completely exposed to laundry. You can still peek it as a defender, but as an attacker, you were no longer really safe in the middle of freezer. This is something we're seeing a lot in comp and I'm definitely liking this setup. For kitchen and dining, you'd ideally reinforce the small tower, reinforce the meeting and reinforce the security. You can choose to make a rotate to security, but you'll have to have someone play around white stairs or in the hallway. If attackers sneak past main lobby into security, the site becomes free real estate for them. You can also reinforce both walls to small tower from bathroom or seen from the bathroom. You can also leave the left one with footholds so you can impact trick this breach. You'll also need to rotate from bathroom to dining. And ideally, you'd have someone roam on the top floor because there are a lot of vertical lines of sight in dorms. So as soon as attackers get that top floor control, it might be difficult to play on this site. For meeting and kitchen, you can have a rotate to security as well. But once again, you'll have to have someone play around that hallway. For this bomb site, you can reinforce the big tower and reinforce the main lobby. You want to have upstairs reinforced too, have the attic hatch open so you can safely peek that and make sure they don't get into sight and plant behind the fallen over table. 
you also want a rotate in between the bomb sites. You can choose to have lines of sight towards dining, but that might make it easier for attackers to take this part of the bomb site. And before we get to specific callouts for this map, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel. You've gotten quite far in the video, so I assume you must be liking the content. We're on the way towards 10k YouTube subs, and all your support helps a lot. I post lots of siege tips and tricks and funny moments videos. These are some specific or important callouts which you'll hear a lot on Oregon. They are essential to understand the next part of the video. E-box. This is a small room next to supply and pillar. This room is called electricity box, but it's shortened to e-box by most people. You'll hear this callout a lot because it's a high pressure area for the downstairs objective. Blue bunker and elbow. This is the blue area downstairs near supply and e-box. As soon as you get close to supply, you'll call that part elbow. This is because it has a cornered part in there, similar to how your elbow can be cornered. The Shiko spot. This is close to the blue door by laundry and supply. This location has a name because Shiko from BDS usually plays here. Highway. This callout is used to describe the hull in between the downstairs objectives, leading on to pillar and freezer door. Zulu. This is the hallway from main lobby to security. The reason people call it Zulu is because the hallway is shaped in a Z. Split. This is the middle part between main lobby and meeting. It's called split because it goes in a two doorways to meeting. Green. This is a short hallway in between big tower and kitchen. You probably also hear the callouts tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3, and these callouts are referring to the big tower. Most people refer to this floor in big tower as tier 1 or T1, this floor is tier 2 or T2, and this floor as tier 3 or T3. This helps describing specific spots in big tower. Concrete. This is used to describe the concrete floor part leading from trophy into games. Attic or pit. This is used to describe the area around attic. Pit is whenever someone jumps off the attic stage into the pit next to it. So we talked about the most important callouts on this map. This is essential to understand the next part that's coming now, because now I'll tell you where you can play as a defender. If you don't know where to play as a defender, let me give you some power positions on site or to roam. For the top floor, you can play around attic and domes if you want to play on site. This will give you control over attic breach, you can peek into the closet breach and hold on the trophy. If you have a rotate to kids storms, you can easily escape. You'll have to be careful here though for innates from underneath coming from kitchen. You can also choose to drop the attic hatch if it's opened when you feel too much pressure. If you prefer to roam, you could also roam around shower hall and kitchen, potentially to stop nates coming from underneath. For laundry, you can play around pillar or shiko that door to blue. Keep in mind that you'll be the first line of defense if they push blue bunker or the big tower stairs. You can help a teammate that's playing in elbow by playing close to the blue door. You can also play around freezer boxes if you feel like the attackers will take freezer. If you don't know yet where the attackers come from, you can play in the middle of supply. If you feel more like roaming, you can roam all around the first floor towards where you think the attackers might be pushing from. And another power position to play is if you're playing with a stack that would be into the blue bunker. Like we mentioned, if you have a smoke and a Jaeger, you can play there with a the shield. This is a pivotal position because you can waste a lot of time here and deny control over the blue bunker. You can play aggressive into the blue bunker or you can play passive and wait with your smoke canisters. If you feel like you're getting pressured in blue bunker, you can ask a teammate to fake reinforce you out. You will actually stay in blue bunker though. The attackers will hear the reinforcement and think you went out of the blue bunker. Their initial thought will be to push it and you'll be there waiting for them with open arms and a shotgun of course. Can someone fake reinforce me out? Yep, yeah. on it. Thank you. That's the uh, Maverick. For kitchen, you can play around security if you have a rotate there. You can play in bathroom to the night control over small tower if you have some impact holes towards small tower. This is a crucial position and a risky position to play, but you can really win the round here. You could also play around the green hallway or meeting if you think the attackers will take that part of the map. For meeting, you can play in split, which is really close to the site. You can play close to the rotate between kitchen and meeting, or you can play in the big tower in tier 3 or tier 2. If you hide here, you could be a great influence in the last part of the round if you're flanking the attackers. You could also play more aggressive and deny the breach. If you have any rotates to kit storms, you can have a good escape. So a few angles or lines of sight that are very strong on this map are You can have verticals above green and kitchen in domes. If you're playing upstairs and you know the attackers will be taken downstairs, you can make verticals here 
and here to stop them from walking into green and dining. If you're defending meeting, it's essential to hold onto attic. If you have the hatch open, you can stop enemies from walking onto meeting stage or the split doors. If you're holding big tower, you can make verticals in tier 3 to look down all the way into tier 2 and tier 1 of big tower. And I bet these are some drone holes that you may have never noticed before. This one goes from master bedroom into games. Perfect for a floors drone or twitch drone to get rid of breach denial. This one is from outside wide into freezer. It's also a really good pre-placed drone spot. And this drone hole can go all the way from freezer onto highway and then into small box where you can spot out hiding defenders. And this one goes from blue bunker towards laundry and if they have a rotate but the both walls to elbow are reinforced you can use it to get rid of electricity on the wall. And now we move on to attacking on this map beginning with spawn peaks. So what spawn peaks can you expect per spawn? For the street spawn the most popular spawn peaks are armory window, master bedroom door, garage door, end the wall if it's open with an impact, main door, even all the way from split and maybe even prone, and the games window. If you're rappelling onto a master bedroom balcony, be careful for runouts from white window or shower hallway or even the small tower door. If you're walking towards big tower, be careful for spawn peaks from the big tower windows. If you spawn construction, you should be wary of runouts from blue bunker, spawn peaks from the satellite or top main window. If you're moving to big tower, and be careful of the big tower door spawn peaks. When you're spawning junkyard, be aware of spawn peaks on the big tower and the small tower window. So where should I attack from? Or how do I set up a simple attack? For the top floor, you can either go for a bedroom closet push or an attic push. Try to get the breach around closet open or get the attic breach open. If you end up not having any breaches open by the end of the round, you can try to push in from the big window or get a few freebies around the white stairs. For laundry, the most common push is to take blue bunker. Get rid of any shields that the smoke might have in the elbow and make sure you get the elbow breach and pillar control. An alternative option would be to take main stairs and freeze the stairs. Ideally, you would have all hatches open as well. This could be done with a maverick or hibana. If you bring a sledge or a buck too, you can create easy rotates on the first floor as demonstrated here. These can save you a lot of time if you're trying to switch your direction later round. When you're attacking kitchen and dining, you can try and take the small tower and top floor around kids and dorms. If you clear out the small tower completely, you can put pressure on bathroom and try to breach small tower wall to dining. For meeting, you can try and take big tower control and the top floor in big tower. And now that I've mentioned plants, it would be really good to talk about the default plant spots or plant spot that just happen often. And these are the plant spots listed from most often to least often. For top floor, it's either behind the games table, on concrete next to the trophy door, around the attic door next to the small table, you could plant around the dorms beds as well, or you can plant inside the kids dorms door in front of the bomb. In laundry, you would just plant into side if you walk through the e-box door. You could plant on the highway double door, or you could plant in the cubby around laundry. For kitchen and dining, you could plant in the dining breach, at the corner of the dining door if you walked in from shower hallway, or you can plant behind the boxes in kitchen. And for kitchen and meeting, you'd plant behind the fallen over table on the meeting stage. So what kind of bands can I expect when I play Oregon in my Siege games? On attack, you can expect operators like Thatcher, Jekyll, Hibana and Maverick to be banned out. And Hibana and Maverick are more so for all the hatches that you have when you're defending downstairs. Thatcher and Jekyll are more bands that we see in any kind of map, but they will occur on Oregon too. On defense, you can expect Mira, Velk, Kate and Clash. The Kate definitely being with the hatches that you have from downstairs that you can hold off with an Electro Claw. Mira and Velk just give so much information on a map like this with certain mirror windows around the e-box for example or around your laundry box and clash can be really really annoying to play against in blue bunker if you don't know how to handle that correctly and to finish off the guide i'll give you some round winning tips if you shoot the blue tops in blue bunker as a defender you'll be able to hear attackers walk into blue bunker much better this will give a better sound cue
as an attacker, you can either use this drone parkour or use the parkour in the action phase. If you jump on the white van here, then run towards the balcony and keep spamming your spacebar, you'll get on there. With your drone, you hop onto the white van, then drive all the way to here and press spacebar. You can always turn your drone to the side mid-air if you're afraid you're not gonna make it. That concludes my full guide for the map Oregon. Let me know what you thought of these tips and if you have any tips to add, feel free to post them in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. We're on the way towards 10k YouTube subs and all the support is appreciated. Check out my channel for more Siege content such as tips and tricks and funny moments that happen during my live streams. You can check out for example this ace guide or these 15 easy Siege tips to start improving immediately. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.